Okay, so in this video I'm going to show you uh, anybody who's interested how to solder a QFN package. Uh, I'm doing this by hand, so if you're doing multiple uh, devices, I suggest um, using something like a reflow oven or getting filled with the, um, the hot air gun. Uh, but what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to pre-tin the, um, the pads on the PCB and on the device. Uh, and then I'm going to align it and then do a reflow with the hot air gun. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do it. This is just the way that I like to do it. It works well. You can get good if you're just doing maybe less than 10 devices. Uh, it can go pretty fast. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So I'm working under a fume hood. Just enough space for my arms to come down. Go through it. And, uh, I've got a QFM package here. Uh, so this QFN does not have a tape on lid, but when they do have tape on lid, you just got to be extra careful uh, that you don't squeeze or apply any like sheer force like the tape off with the tape on lid. And so a good way to deal with that is to just apply some Kepton tape on the device and just sort of work in segments as we start to pre-tin uh, all the pads and solder uh, on the QFN, but then also on the PC. The flat side of this piece of tape. So I've got something like this, so the cap down tape is really good because it uh, will stand really high temperatures on the solder and I've basically taped over everything except for this set of pads here and I'm going gonna, gonna to drag solder, I'm first going to apply some flux and then drag solder uh, over these pads uh, just to get a nice free tin of the pads. I'm going to avoid soldering anything on the center pad just because it's going to I, want the, I don't want it to stand up off the PCB, I want the, the small pads to make connection to the PCB first, uh, and then I'll solder the bottom pad in here. So, usually I would use a, uh, a tip that looks something like this, which is sort of a chisel. Uh, so it's, it's pointy, sort of, on one side, it's about a millimeter and a half, uh, and I would just sort of drag apply the flux and then just sort of drag the solder like this and then if I get it, uh, too much solder I'll just kind of keep the solder like doing passes over it until uh, the other pads are joined together. I, I try to do this really quick without too much solder. Uh, it's easier to add more solder later than to remove it, so I'm going to do that now. So it's also really important that we keep the solder to clean, so I'm using some of this tip activator uh, here. Should get a nice uh, clean tip. Put it in this gold wire. Sort of clean it out to get it to find. So that's what it's like. Now I'm using a, a no clean flux paste. pre-tin my solder iron. Now if this was a, a chisel, I would just sort of drag the flat edge of the chisel across the pads. Uh, since it's a little flatter, I have to, I'm going to use the flat edge and just sort of drag it across. Uh, first I pre-tin just a little bit. Let's see how this goes first try. Alright, I'm going to take that to the microscope and try to get a look. So I just finished all four sides, you can see that here. Uh, every time that I solder, I, I don't need to use the tip activator, but I uh, I do push the solder into the gold brush, or if you use like a damp sponge, uh, and I use new flux, and I use a little bit more solder. Uh, so even to the device, uh, pads are ready to go. They're, I had to do one of the, redo one of the sides, because I want all of the solder bumps sort of raised, so that when I put it on the PCB, it makes contact to the pads and the PCB. Uh, so there it is. I'm going to do the same process for the pads and the PCB. Um, 
it, it looks like they're pretty tin, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it really quick uh, again so that they're raised when I uh, put the device on. So this next part took a long time, so I sped it up at 10 times, but basically I'm repeating the process using plenty of flux. I'm not super satisfied with the final results, so I end up going over it again with just a little bit more flux. Uh, I'm careful here not to do this too many times because uh, especially these cheap PCBs like this one sometimes can break when we're doing this. Um, I tried an alignment using tape, which is not shown, uh, but what I end up doing is I kind of clean up some of the flux and I actually put more on and I use the flux as like stickiness to sort of align the device. You'll see that next. But here's the pads under the microscope. I'm satisfied with that. I'm wiping them off so that they are, um, I can see them a little bit better. And here I failed with the tape and I'm using the hot iron, uh, the hot air gun. Um, I do two passes, uh, about 30 seconds each. Usually one pass, so maybe 45 would have probably been fine. Um, I apply more flux and um, here's my second pass. I end up not being very satisfied with one of the sides and so I just I think I apply a little bit more flux uh, and do it again. The flux pen picked up a little solder blob and it put it on the pads and so here you can see I actually take the iron and I remove it with some of the copper uh, braid and then I just use the hot iron again. So this is the final results that I wanted to show. You notice that it's not perfect. Um, something Here you can see the result of the solder bob in the center there that I had to fix with the iron, but uh, after I inspected it, no shorts. But you'll notice I looked under the microscope, inspected it quite a few number of times, and uh, can validate that uh, there's, I don't see any visual shorts. And so this is a board that I would continue to solder all the other components on and continue testing. Um, you gotta be careful with any sort of special semiconductor packaging, like we often use the tape on lids, um, which can just sort of slide off and it will expose the bare dye. So in those situations, I would not ex recommend doing, uh, applying any sort of shear force to the device that might slide it off. I would also not recommend doing like an alcohol bath at the end. A lot of times I like to take these boards and uh, soak them in alcohol, uh, do a few washes of alcohol, DI water, alcohol, DI water, and kind of rub off the, the flux residue. Uh, you can still see a little bit of it, but I think it looks pretty good and it's going to work for what we're doing.